anyway, I've, I've thought about that story a lot as I watch um, neighborhoods change. I also watched the rents go up in the Castro enormously. Um, the people who were, were doing business there and had done business there for years and years and years, who owned the businesses, um, who were not gay, as it was making that shift, I watched their rents just suddenly zoom up and they couldn't stay in business. And they were the people who were not upset about the change. I mean, they were the people who wanted to stay, who gave us credit, who, you know, who were really um, excited about the changes in the neighborhood and very generous folks, but they were not gay and they could not afford to stay in the neighborhood. And the people that replaced them are gay businesses, but much more upscale. I mean, the liquor store, for example, and uh, is one of the people that I knew a lot. He gave people credit all the time. He was a really great guy, and he got forced out by the rents going up so much. Um, in terms of the basic question, are gay neighborhoods worth saving? I would certainly say absolutely. Um, we need to have a place that's safe for all of us. We need to have a place where we can, in fact, be ourselves. I'm, I have lots of friends from other countries who come here and just are so amazed and grateful. And it's such an experience to walk down the street and be able to really be yourselves. Um, the, um, anyway, the, there's a quote that Joe Nessel says, um, talking about the 50s, actually, in Greenwich Village. But I feel like it really applies very much to the Castro also. She says, um, she says, in the 50s, Greenwich Village was a homeland that even if you never got to go there, that made life possible for people. And I think of the Castro functioning that way for gay people, you know, around the world, basically. Um, and certainly, um, it's functioned that way for me. You know, it is my home, it is my homeland been here a long time, nowhere else is home. Um, and I don't want it changed, and I don't want it changed from being gay. I also want it to be affordable. I want to be able to continue to live in it. And I want my neighbors to be able to continue to live in it. And, um, you know, the big thing that keeps happening is people say, I'd love to live in the Castro, but I can't afford it. Just one other little economic thing. Um, both of my major activities, uh, one being the Historical Society here and the other being Modern Times Bookstore, are both um, institutions that are struggling, that um, cannot afford high salaries for our employees. And both institutions are finding that finding workers, um, most of the people that work at Modern Times now have to live in East Bay. They cannot afford San Francisco. And the idea of living in the Castro for most of them, I mean, they're mostly young people, but they can't even imagine living in the Castro at this point. Um, and it means that modern times, you know, if we can't find workers that can afford to live in the area where they work, um, we're not going to be able to stay open. And it's also a problem with nonprofits like the Historical Society that if we can't you know, we can't pay people enough to be able to live in the area. Um, you know, how can nonprofits stay here? And it would mean that a lot of the queer nonprofits would have to leave town um, because of that problem. Nonprofits can't afford high salaries, and you can't live here without one these days. It's becoming this major contradiction for all of us. So, so Jerry.